we have seen what is the uniform flow so today we are going to talk about the uniform flow formulas okay so how to compute the uniform flow so we will need some uh, expression for that and those are called as uniform flow formulas okay last time we have seen that when the flow properties do not change with respect to space then that flow is called as a uniform flow and the depth at which we achieve a uniform flow condition that depth is called as a normal depth so today we will see some of the formulas last time we saw the very first formula which was developed by chazy in 1769 that is called as the chazy's formula chazy's formula states that it uh, chazy's formula gives the velocity of the uniform flow as c equal c into under root r into sb okay so c is the chazy's constant r is the hydraulic radius sb is the bed slope all right so what is r c is chazy's constant r is hydraulic radius and sb is the bed slope okay now how what is the use of this formula okay so how we can use this formula in the field in the practical field suppose we want to use this formula so what's its use if we think about this then uh, we can think of an example let's say you have a river suppose you have a river all right and uh, you you know the cross section of the river okay now suppose there is some gauging station at some particular location at some uh, gauging station means this uh, the location where you, uh, people measure the velocities and discharge of the flowing river that is called as a gauging station there we measure the depth we measure the discharge of the river etc okay that is called as a gauging station now suppose what happens you are living in uh, at some location okay and you go you got the information that all right some flood is going to come and of so and so discharge you know the discharge okay let us say 100 cube 100 meter cube per second so you know that in this river 100 cubic meters of water is going to flow in 1 second okay after some time because the flood has come to some upstream station so flood will pass definitely pass through this location okay now you want to know when this flood will come what will be the depth how much will be the rise of water how much will be the water level at the time of the flood this is a very um, a rough on approximate way of doing it but still we can do and use uh, uniform flow formula to do this okay now what we have to do once we know the discharge what you can do you can find out the normal depth for which the discharge will pass through this cross section so how you can do it q is a into v we know that v average okay area into velocity average area is a function of suppose you uh, approximate this cross section as a rectangular cross section suppose so it will be b into y or it will be some function of uh, flow depth okay into velocity what is velocity it is it is equal to c according to chazy's formula c under root r into sb raised to 1 by 2 okay so <coughs> q is equal to b y c under root r sb to the power 1 by 2 the slope of the river bed you know okay the base width suppose you know the uh, area of the flow also you know in form of y okay you know the roughness constant chazy's constant of this river c suppose okay it is known suppose mm. and you know the discharge okay and r is r is equal to what a by p so it is also a function of y p perimeter is also a function of y okay so once you know the chazy's constant you can use this uniform flow formula to calculate the depth of flow so you can calculate that depth y n okay y will be particular y n in this case whenever flow takes place uniform flow takes place the depth that you get is a uniform flow depth okay normal depth so you can calculate this y n and predict how much water level will be there when some flood is going to come in this river so this is the practical use or a kind of uh, 
some uh, what you can say a practical application of this uh, uniform flow formula all right now after this formula was given by chazy 1769 it was used for uh, mostly for the purposes of channel design etc but uh, some improvements were going on so gangulate and cutter uh, they did some experiments they did a series of experiments in 1869 and came up with a more improved value of uh, chazy's constant so they are, what they did is they gave the value of chazy's constant but still the chazy's constant was equal to 23 plus 1 by n plus 0.00155 divided by sb upon 1 plus 23 plus 0.00155 by sb into n by root r but still here all the values are known r can be calculated sb can be uh, measured but this n was cutter's constant it this n cutter's constant depended upon depend upon the uh, roughness characteristics of the channel okay so this was one improvement uh, in the chazy's formula and this formula was again used but uh, major uh, development took place in 1889 that uh, in 18, 1889 robert manning gave uh, he was also an engineer and he gave uh, one uh, very simple expression for velocity for uniform flow okay so he gave one very simple formula v is equal to 1 by n r to the power 2 by 3 sb to the power 1 by 2 okay so this was quite uh, after this uh, manning's formula came into picture then most of the people started using this manning formula and even till now also whenever we do some uh, computation of uniform flow of normal depth we use manning's formula commonly okay so this is a very famous formula manning's formula here this n is the manning's constant or manning's roughness constant manning's roughness constant so once you know the manning's roughness constant of a particular material okay let us say uh, river if you uh, if you have a river okay and uh, you know the manning's constant for the river bed material okay suppose bed material is sand suppose sand having some uh, d50 okay so whatever 1.1 mm suppose so you know the material particle size distribution of this sand and you uh, calculate the manning you can calculate manning's roughness constant for this material in the laboratory okay so um, this manning's roughness constant values for various materials are available people have uh, conducted experiments and given the values of n so once you know the value of n you can calculate the uniform flow velocity for any discharge okay so you can calculate it and get the value of normal depth okay and vice versa you can get uh, very you can calculate various flow properties when the uh, flow is uniform so you can get the normal depth y n okay you can calculate what is the average velocity v average okay by this formula all right so these are the uses of um, open channel flow problem uh, open channel flow formula all right now this manning's roughness constant depends upon various uh, factors so these are the four important factors which i have pointed out on which the manning's roughness constant will depend and it will change uh, accordingly okay so what are those factors so we'll quickly discuss those factors now first factor i have written here that is the vegetation okay so when we talk about prismatic channel okay so suppose you are having a prismatic channel okay like an irrigation canal suppose this is a irrigation canal through which water this is now lined with concrete cement concrete okay the surface of the lined canal is applied with cement concrete so it is a lined canal and this canal is used to transport water from dams to the agricultural field suppose all right now this is a lined canal so here there will be very less amount of plants that will grow inside this channel canal okay because only at a few locations you will find some grass or some weed or some vegetation okay so vegetation is not present here but suppose you take a natural cross sectional river okay you 
you go into a natural river and you see the bottom of the river you will find some vegetation okay some natural vegetation you will find so what happens if this is the cross section suppose okay in l section what happens suppose uh, when the flow takes place over the vegetation so suppose this is the vegetation this was initial vegetation suppose okay it has some depth now because of uh, as the flow encounters the vegetation it uh, it may uh, be flexible so it will bend like this it may may be a rigid kind of vegetation so it will not bend okay it depends upon its uh, flexibility as well as the height so now because of this vegetation uh, this vegetation will offer extra resistance to the flow and it will affect the manning's roughness constant okay so presence of vegetation will change the or rather it will increase the uh, resistance characteristics of a channel so uh, manning's co uh, roughness constant will change again this uh, there are se several parameters of vegetation which are important in this case one is the height of vegetation okay second is the flexibility how flexible the vegetation is and thirdly how closely they are spaced okay so spacing is also important so closely packed vegetation will affect the flow differently and uh, sparsely vegetated flows will uh, be behave differently so spacing height and uh, flexibility these are the parameters which which will affect the manning's roughness constant okay another factor is channel alignment okay that can change the manning's roughness constant is the alignment so now if you observe in the field you you will see you can uh, see basically two cases for uh, for few cases you will see that channels are straight straight channels okay in some parts the rivers are if this is the plan of the river then rivers the plan view if you see the river then river alignment is straight straight alignment but if you goes at some other location for the same river you will see that there are there is some curvature to the significant curvature to the river channel okay so flow is taking place like this through the curvature now uh, if you even if the material does not change even if the bed material of this river is not changing uh, drastically bed load is same suppose uh, bed material composition is same still so manning's roughness uh, value should be same ideally okay but it is not the case uh, when the alignment changes alignment of the river changes the roughness value of the river also changes generally because of the uh, curvatures the roughness characteristics of the channel will increase so roughness of the channel will basically increase okay so this is one of the uh, factors that will affect the uh, manning's roughness constant uh, next is the channel uh, next is the siltation okay there is one more uh, factor that is a stage stage is basically depth of water stage means what stage is nothing but the depth of water depth of water measured from a arbitrary datum that is called as a stage now now what happens suppose you take a natural channel and uh, so depth of flow is suppose very less okay then what uh, you will observe that the manning's constant for this particular depth will be different but if you calculate the manning's constant for higher depth okay this will be n1 but higher depth if you take and try to calculate the manning's constant then this n2 will be different okay so stage or depth of flow also affects the resistance uh, manning's uh, roughness coefficient okay no doubt here now uh, this is a simple argument that uh, if the depth is increasing the wetted perimeter is increasing okay so resistance will definitely increase but i am not talking about the total resistance force that will definitely increase it is a, it is quite intuitive logical but uh, along with the total resistance force the resistance characteristics are also increasing the, the roughness parameter the roughness parameter is also increasing okay that is the point which has to be noted so it also depends upon the stage 
then uh, one more there are several other factors also but these are the major factors some the another factor in uh, rivers is siltation and scouring okay so natural rivers as you know are made up of sediments okay sediment bed so if this is your natural channel flow is taking place okay but the channel bottom is made up of sediments okay it may be cohesive sediments non cohesive sediments okay anything now what happens when water is flowing over the sediments this boundary is not rigid boundary this is mobile boundary channel we have discussed this earlier also that this becomes a mobile boundary channel and when flow takes place over mobile boundary channel there are chances at some locations there are chances that the sediment at the bottom will move okay that is called as bed load that we'll see later but the sediments are prone to undergo motion the particles at the channel bed can change their location okay they can move so if uh, that basically depends upon the uh, effective force exerted by the flow on the sediments if the flow is greater than the critical uh, if the force exerted is greater than the critical tractive force then this sediment uh, uh, particle will move okay and you will get a scouring similarly so there are firstly there is a chance of scouring okay scouring means the channel bed was like this but since the flow velocity is very high suppose it is exerting greater uh, critical tractive force and this was the channel bottom suppose but at this location there was a scouring after later okay so sediment were taken away by the flow this is first case scouring now when scouring occurs then the <coughs> resistance of the channel increases okay so natural channel in a natural channel definitely there will be some places where you will uh, observe scouring so here your manning's roughness constant will increase but there are again now this sediments which are moving with the flow they will get deposited somewhere at some locations where velocities are less okay so suppose this there is a zone in the river this is suppose a river it is flowing the same river is flowing okay and at some location the flow velocities are very less so suppose the sediments will be deposited here okay so because of the sediment deposition also the manning's roughness constant changes okay generally uh, roughness will decrease because of the siltation okay sediment deposition is called as a siltation okay so siltation and scouring will also affect the roughness characteristics okay so this is all about the uh, uniform flow formulas now from the next class what we'll try to do we'll uh, see how to compute or how to calculate or do the computations of uniform flow okay so that we'll see from the next lecture thank you